Hey guys, welcome back to episode number 20. I can't believe we hit this number in the series of obscure, well, sort of obscure toy lines. Now, we're going to take a look at another six toys, starting with Big Jim. And if you want to know what those 140 obscure toys that we already covered were, you can check out the Facebook page. Just, you know, look for Loch Ness Monster. So we're going to start off with Big Jim from Mattel in 1972. The Jim series was inspired by the original G.I. Joe line, a little shorter, standing at about 10 inches tall. Each figure had a back button that would activate a karate chop. The figure's arms were also made of a soft plastic that you could simulate a bulging bicep flex. Big Jim was more of an outdoor adventure as opposed to a military character, and this included different clothes and vehicles and animals tying into those sports, camping, and different hunting aspects. Monchi Cheese by Saguchi and Mattel, 1974. So the Monchi Cheese are a Japanese stuffed animal toy line. They were created with the purpose by the company to promote peace and love among children. Three different cartoon series were created for the Monchi Cheese. The American version was done by Hanna-Barbera in 1983. The Monchi Cheese started to lose popularity by 1986, but come full circle by their 30th anniversary they became available for purchase online again and are still wildly popular in Germany. They also come in a variety of sizes ranging from 10 centimeters all the way up to 80 centimeters. The Shadow by Kenner 1994 so this was the official toy for the motion picture. Now the movie didn't do well in theaters, costed about 40-50 million and only making 48 million domestically. So the toys weren't really popular. An interesting side note to go along with that is that Nintendo was even planning to do a uh, Super NES game based on the movie and it just didn't come out. The line saw 8 figures, 1 deluxe and 4 vehicles on release. But again with poor movie ticket sales and reviews the toys quickly saw their way to the clearance bin. You know, on a side note for me, the uh, one character with the double quick draw guns and the light up eyes, you know, it looked like it had potential. Shrinky Dinks, 1973, and I had a hard time pinning down the actual creators and or distributors because it keeps going around and around, but currently it's big time toys. Hitting its popularity in the late 70s and early 80s, Shrinky Dinks came in a variety of popular cartoons and characters of the time. Basically, it was a polystyrene plastic that you would put in the oven and melt down after coloring it. It would shrink down to about one-fourth the size and it would become nine times thicker, making for a versatile and pretty strong toy. The Talking Viewmaster by Fisher Price, 1970s. So, you want to get obscure? Come on, let's get obscure. Not only is this a Viewmaster, but it's the Talking Viewmaster. So, it was originally introduced in the 1930s. The stereoscopic vision was used and released in the 1960s, and the talking version also came out in the 70s. So, the plastic stereoscopic viewer toy had 14 pictures for a total of 7 images, and when you viewed them at the same time through the Viewmaster, this would simulate binocular depth perception. The talking version only lasted a few years because it was bigger, bulkier, kids didn't want to carry it around, and it was a battery eater. And rounding out this week is Rainbow Bright, again by Mattel, 1983. Rainbow Bright was created by the Hallmark Cards Company. She's a fictional girl from Rainbow Land who uses all the colors of the rainbow to brighten our world. Each character of the original run had a certain colored power with a soft material body, cloth clothing, and a soft plastic head with yarn hair. Rainbow Bright had two cartoon series in the 1980s and in the 2010s, along with two feature length movies coincidentally in the 1980s and the 2010s. Oddly enough, the resurgence in the Rainbow Bright popularity came back through way of Hot Topic because there was Hot Topic exclusive shirts and little collectible toys that brought the franchise back. And that's going to do it for 20 episodes, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching, commenting, liking these videos, and above all, 
uh, sending in suggestions and recommendations because this whole series is about toys that we remember from our childhood or you know toys that we vaguely remember and we want to know a little bit more about so I always appreciate all the uh, comments and the new suggestions and that's what helped keeps the series going guys so you know if you got a few minutes let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next thanks a lot I'll see you in about a week